I V M. Hey guys, even though Elon Musk is trying to turn everyone into robots, you'll be happy to know that very real human beings work at IVM Podcast, and some of them are even cool. How do I know? Well, listen to their own podcast, IVM Likes, where they recommend what they are listening to, watching, or reading. Catch IVM Likes every Monday on iTunes, Stitcher, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. And may I recommend the IVM Podcasts app? Welcome to another episode of the Geek Food Podcast. I'm here with Jishnu. Hi, Jishnu. Hello. We have a special guest today. It is drummer extraordinaire. Yeah. Drummer extraordinaire. Yes, yeah. I'm Rohan a drummer Joshi. extraordinaire now. What's yes. up? What's Hi. up? How's it Thanks going? Thanks for being here, dude. Thank you for having me. This I... was so uh, random because uh, we met once uh, yes. previously to discuss other pop culture things. Yes, we did. We won't speak of it because we it will not. I have no idea it. what you're talking about. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, it was Game of Thrones. <laughs> but anyway, but, uh, but apart from that, uh, comedian, uh, you know, you you have um, you know shows. I you do. do things. I do things. This you is... have a bunch of things. This description is going great so far. I do things. I have shows. We have we have very low standard. At this, uh, at this podcast, which explains explain why I'm things. here. Yep. Which explains why I'm here. We do have yes. one thing though, which is uh, okay. we don't like to interview our guests like okay. at length because that's just like why you're here yeah, to yeah. talk about stuff. Damn right. But we do uh, do an introduction of like give us your your most like your proudest like nerd cred, say from the time you get. What's your maybe like a prize? What do you what would oh, yeah. you say is like for mm-hmm. me? If I would say like my favorite thing when I was growing up was LucasArts. Point and click adventures, boom. <laughs> right, okay. Super nerdy. <laughs> right, yeah. Establishes so the zone immediately. <clears throat> right. Okay. Jishu's favorite film of all time, right. The Little Mermaid, mm-hmm. being adapted nice. right now. Right. So, yeah. boom. We know where he's at. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Under the sea. <laughs> what? <laughs> all right. I don't know. I just feel like this is important. Okay. Does it does it Ron count? Yoshiko. Does it count as nerd cred huh? if I tell you that my favorite movie is The Matrix and I remember that the first time I saw it was the fourth of July, nineteen ninety nine, at nine o'clock in the morning. Nice. Um, nice. I saw it ten times again. After that, I only wore black for a year because of that movie. <laughs> Okay. I took everybody Including my grandmother To watch the movie Because I was like Everybody must be exposed to nice. this My grandmother didn't get it At all yeah. uh, As a Maharashtrian Her entire review of the movie is, manu se udhya kashala marto hai. <laughs> Which I think is also A fair comment on the movie If you look at it From another perspective You're gonna have to explain that yeah. to, to, That to is basically <laughs> Marathi for Why is this man Jumping around so much nice. yeah. Which I guess is but, a but fair But every Hindi movie Boiled down we, Every Hindi movie We did an episode about that Because of the 20th anniversary Just yeah, a month course, ago yeah. And do, do you also have Thoughts on why They choose to wear BDSM clothes when they go into the matrix no, you know it's the just, fact it's that the, the, crew, right. it's like, no, the huh. crew no the crew the crew always deep leather and what's her face with the white hair? Uh, cipher? C- no, 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 that's switch. 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 That was switch and apoc. No, no, yeah. uh, no bra, and like you can see, just nip, nips for days. I thought on, 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 underneath that white thing, I'm I just like, yo, like thing. you can wear whatever you want to wear. Why are you guys all into this kinky stuff? This I figured the whole kinky stuff was a. Kinky. They were the only people who weren't dressed like dressed down in suits, etc. So there was the only sort of form of self-expression. In I the agree. One, one second. Oh, I'm not. A. A. I'm not kink shaming. No, not kink shaming. Yes, self-expression. Too prude. I'm not Also, I feel like just see the thing is also right. We keep. Forgetting that now we're at a place where the conversation is way more woke in terms of kink shaming, etc., gender fluidity, <laughs> yeah, 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 all of that. Yeah. Twenty years ago, um, I feel so like the Switch the was yeah. the first truly androgynous, fluid yeah. character that we'd ever seen in like a mainstream movie. In all of that white right. and essentially, <clears throat> literally a flip on all the other characters who are in black. Agree, and dark, agree. And Switch is the opposite of that, and which is why I think. The BDSM gear was essentially just them letting their king fly, like their king flag, flag fly in a yeah. really boring world. That's why when she died, I was like, not like this. Yeah, not like this. Not like this. Not like this. <laughs> exactly that. All right, cool. We yeah. got a we got a little uh, note card, which turned into a big note card. That's there cool. You go. Yeah, Matrix is uh, is exceptional. Maybe we'll do an episode which we haven't yet uh, mm-hmm. on the sequels, which I personally reevaluate love. and yeah, yeah. I love revisit them. and reevaluate. Fuck it. Fuck the haters, I'm 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 into it. All I, right. Yes. 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 <laughs> All right. We're moving on. We're talking about Spider Man uh, Far From Home. Actually, we, uh, you know, there was an early mm-hmm. idea. There was an idea. There was an uh, idea to get you in for the end game episode. Mm-hmm. But uh, just since we have, there's been too much, you know, uh, exposition mm-hmm. and like just talk about that. Mm-hmm. So quickly, end game. What did you think? Uh, and uh, what did? What was your most uh, lasting impression of that film? And what it's done to the Marvel Cinematic Universe so far? Okay, really quickly. Yeah. Um, not a perfect film, yeah. but a perfect ending. Great. I think mm-hmm. to the Infinity Saga in the sense that um, you had this 22 uh, film run mm-hmm. that ends and I think this beautiful final chapter that A pays tribute to every single chapter that's come before it. Yeah. Um, and the thing that I really loved 
loved about it is the directions in which they took their main characters and they went you know what we're drawing definitive lines under these characters nobody gets to come back 5 years from now and be like oh you know we're going to revitalize iron man with True. another tony stark appearance and we're going to throw another 50 million at chris evans and he can come back they made such definitive decisions with the characters well he might as well have been in this new movie the number of times he's <laughs> named he, oh i have so yeah. many thoughts yeah, about that we'll 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 um, i thought it was beautiful <laughs> i thought it was brilliant and i think it's the closest we will ever come to seeing even just the comic book model oh, yeah. <laughs> replicated into the cinematic model just that idea of individual films with of individual issues that go into this giant Shots tie in yeah. and then go back to their individual issues and then come back to this tie in and then wrap that up and i thought that was quite beautiful so, so to when, say you loved it i did love it yeah. i did love it very but very much but i just want to follow up on that when yeah, you say okay. when you say, say it's the closest we're going to see to the comic book model on film do you think that's because they're going to start steering away from that or you think they're just never going to nail it as well i think it's a combination of the two one is i think they might have found that just as a result of trying to pull that off the yeah. sort of contractual and legal yeah. things involved in trying to make that happen right. consistently is going to be tougher yeah. um Um, and B, I think they might just steer away from that because how do you? I think this is the Star Wars lesson. You can't be on the point make lightning uh, in a bottle, in a bottle. twice. Uh, well, I, mean, I will say this though. I mean, like when when the whole thing started. I mean, not to dive right into it, <laughs> yeah, but like but when they started, Iron Man was really not an A lister, at least in the comics. Not mm-hmm. even slightly. He was a serious guy. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, you know, alcoholic things like, mm-hmm. and they made him. Robert Downey Jr. essentially right. kind of uh, carved him into like a completely new character. Now he's like an A-lister in the comics as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's reflective of what this guy is in the cinematic. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. like, it's an interesting thing. I think, yeah, we, you know, Endgame will probably not uh, happen again in the sense that the first time you watch it, it's it's something yes. special. And yes. then after that, it kind of loses its charm. They said that about Avengers and then we got Endgame and then, mm-hmm. you know, so the first Avengers when we saw, we were like, oh shit, they ain't going to do this again. And, yeah. and they, they've done but it But I think again. you will have diminishing returns. Absolutely. If but they try yeah. to do that again and again. Right? But I think they are capable of making us care as much so, if not more for all the other fringe characters which they have now brought. Like, I mean, like, oh, hey, absolutely. so to speak, like Strange or whatever. I mean, but it would just be interesting likeable. to see them go in a different direction yeah, though, now, yeah, instead of definitely. trying to sort of do that sort of Earthbound Infinity Saga thing yeah, right, where it's yeah. just sort of split the universe apart so wide yeah. that like one of the things I think they do brilliantly is that anybody can show up in any movie and you yeah. just roll with it because Man, the characters yeah. are so They're beautifully so fleshed out right, right now in the, so they, in the, like, anybody yeah. can show up anywhere and you just be like you know what I'll watch these two do anything yeah um, I cool. and I think that's what I'm looking so, forward to do that anything of these two <laughs> alright cool that's so let's talk about segue. Uh, Sp- <laughs> let's talk about Spider-Man Far From Home um this is the the sequel I mean it comes obviously mm-hmm. after the whole five year jump so there's a lot of explaining which they mm-hmm. try and get out of the way in the beginning mm-hmm. of the film mm-hmm. but let's uh, start definitively yeah. how did you like this film give me your reaction like uh, a, a one word or did you love it or did you hate it or did you what did you feel about it Rohan go I was underwhelmed you are underwhelmed wow. mm-hmm. Jishnu loved it Loved it. Yeah. <laughs> I, right. I, I, I thought about it a bit. I didn't like it in my first viewing uh, as much. Okay. And the second viewing, I thought it's. I, I, I had to dig a little more, and then I got sure. what I wanted. Okay. But I do have issues with this film, so right. I think we're in a in a, this is in good. a balance. This is, so again, it's, to be clear, underwhelmed. I didn't hate it. Yeah, yeah I, I, didn't, just yeah, underwhelmed. I didn't hate it. Yeah. Underwhelmed. Okay. Just underwhelmed. Okay. So uh, let's, uh, let's 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 start with you. Let's, let's start with uh, what you felt was lacking in the film. What did you feel? Uh, okay. So one of the things that. And this started sort of annoying me straight out of the bat is how much they leaned into the Iron Man nostalgia. Yeah. Like it's great. Alarming. And I feel like everybody wanted to see that. But mm-hmm. then beyond a point, they just started pandering. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Like they pandered. Like, okay, if it's a Spider-Man movie, the best thing about it should not be the memory of a guy who died in the last movie. But isn't it the theme the of the film, you think? Like, Even if it's the theme, the theme of, of the film, he has to sort of transcend kind of. that. See, so yeah. here's what I came out of the film. And I'm like, if for any reason, Endgame had sucked. Mm-hmm. And we hadn't bought the Iron Man death in right. at all. Right. What would Spoilers you have enjoyed? Guys, <laughs> I'm just saying. What would you have enjoyed in this movie right. as a standalone Spider-Man story if yeah. you didn't buy into the emotions of that stuff? Every okay. time he's dealing with the passing of Iron Man, great. But every time yeah. he's just trying to tell this nice Spider-Man story, yeah. which should happen, right, in a film that is essentially his film. Yeah. I just felt like that didn't work for me. This mm. the simple problem is that I feel like. Four days from now, I'll remember two scenes from the movie. Okay, and mm. I feel like that's a problem, yeah. um, especially yeah, with and especially and again with Spidey sequel. This is a problem because I still feel Spider Man Two is one of the greatest superhero movies ever made. Like Love the original yeah. Spider Man Two, Tobey Maguire, Doc Ock, outstanding film. Yeah, yeah. So for and this they had so much to build on. They had so much to build on with the events of Endgame and with the events of Homecoming, and I right. just felt like. Yeah, it felt like a filler film. Hmm. So it is, it that, is supposed it is, to conclude the phase. That, that's right? the Something? thing. So yeah. in, in that vein, like, you're very fair points. But I feel like one thing that I really like about this iteration of 
Spidey as opposed to the Tobey Maguire one. Like I I like the first Spidey with Tobey. Uh, two and three, I don't remember them too well because I haven't seen them multiple times sure. at all. I've only seen the one time way back when. Okay. One thing that I like about how they handle this Spidey is the fact that since they don't have an Uncle Ben mm-hmm. and the fact that he is a kid, every superhero has daddy and mommy issues, right? Sure. Now, Aunt May but is Tony a cool... Stark is essentially the exactly. Uncle Ben. Yeah, yeah he's essentially this. Uncle Ben to, in this piece. To that, to that point, the yeah. fact that Uncle Ben, as opposed to, you know, what, 20 minutes, half an hour into the movie, getting killed randomly by some <laughs> mm-hmm. random dude who you you know don't really know that much about. The fact that his Uncle Ben, a.k.a. Tony in this one, has been built for 18 or so films prior to sure. know, meeting Spidey. And then even if you, you're right, even if Endgame didn't work, um, just the fact that we know his Uncle Ben so much better, I feel like I'm okay with grieving over Uncle Ben for an entire movie because yeah, right. I know Uncle Ben. Right, as okay. opposed to just like... Here's a namesake character who is father, like like the Batman problem. Like, right. please stop talking about Martha. We, I don't know who Martha is. Sure. I don't care that much about her. But mm-hmm. I know who Tony is. Right. And so to that end, I personally, since I friggin' loved Endgame, I was, like, I'm still torn up about Endgame. Like, oh, no, I, of course, same here. I, w- I watched it with Inka last night. I, I, yeah. And I told him, like, literally, like, seconds before the movie started... Uh, I don't like if they just mention Tony's name. I'm gonna I'm, like hold me. <laughs> so you must and, have been the, a and the first freaking thing that yeah. you see is that I was like, okay, this is a little on the nose, and I'm with you. I was like, okay, I didn't expect to immediately see yeah. so much Tony love, but you know, I'll be honest. The minute you have that conversation with uh, Favreau and uh, Peter on the plane, that was great. Yeah, I love that. I was bawling. Yeah, it was, I was like a, it was I was like balling. Emotional. I was so like, I needed that's, that. That's where the movie lost me. You're talking about the one just before the climax, right? Yes. Well, yeah, 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 where so he basically makes a suit. And that's he makes where a the suit movie lost of, me, especially yeah. when he did the using the holographic display thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. how hard are you trying to but drive I mean, home the point but that of was, that was what he's taking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you're like hammering me over. Also, this is, and now this is, this you could agree, disagree. I don't necessarily still fully buy the Pete taking over for... Tony thing. I agree. I don't all. like that. I don't, I don't like, like that. that at all because mm. I feel like there's 20 other people mm. in that Qualified. chain of command who would make yeah, significantly smarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> like, that, why, why doesn't... That was my first Or at the very thought. least, why yeah. doesn't like Edith have like a direct way to call the Hulk or somebody where like Spider-Man can get help from somebody. Right. Because, I agree. Yeah. I because even that feeling of getting Edith and then immediately sort of meeting Jake Chilno and be like, man, you should have Edith and then transferring over. Agreed. I'm like, dude, For, completely mm, agree. this so is such a terrible lack of judgment on your part. Yeah, that I yeah, am now yeah, starting to dislike yeah. Spider-Man. Don't do this to me. Yeah. Um, let's, wow. let's, okay, cool. yeah. very interesting. I felt the same thing about this. Uh, I think this is more of like it's a, almost like a meta uh, thing of the of the producers and Feige and all saying, oh, so we don't have our marquee kind of character anymore. Yeah. But Spider-Man is clearly that guy who's going to be taking over as the lead character, even if he's not like Tony. Yeah. And I think the movies. I mean, yeah, it it fumbles in trying to uh, do that exchange where it's like, okay, Tony's gone, but you need to be the next Iron Man. But he really doesn't have to. He has to be the next. Uh, the, the first Spider-Man. He has to be yeah. the next lead. He has to right? be the first yeah. Spider-Man yeah. and just become his own person. Yeah. I agree. I think there are two kind of big themes in this film, which I like the second one. The first one is, yes, this whole uh, moving on and moving forward yeah. and, and basically, yeah. But the second theme, which is about this whole fake news kind of thing, is the one that I kind of dug a little bit more. Like, I wish that we got more in that because exactly. the kind of I Mysterio... I don't think they fit justice to that. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Um, but I, th- I like where they're going with it because it's an mm. interesting trilogy if you just exclude uh, all the other films from it. If you take out Infinity, Infinity War and right. and Endgame and stuff. If we just look at the the Homecoming, Far From Home, and whatever mm-hmm. eventually will be the third part. Sure. Uh, so the first one is like him, uh, you know, saying that oh, if you don't, if you can't, if if you can't do anything without this suit, you don't deserve it. Mm-hmm. Sure. The second one, but now it's kind of moving into this thing about like like a belief system of the people, like a, like a personal one. One is like a personal belief in yeah. yourself. And the mm-hmm. second one is how you present yourself to the public. And it's cool because responsibility, which is Spider-Man's yeah. whole stake, yeah. mm-hmm. is still like the core theme of all, all of it. Like, Absolutely. Uh, you know, accountability. Now it's like accountability with like news networks. Like there's, there's a bit of, I see a bit of cap in that. I see a little bit. I, I mean, I'm really reading way too much into this. Yeah. But I kind of see a little bit of like things Tony has learned from his beef with Cap of like right. oh I need to let things go or I need to just do the right thing despite Correct. the consequence or despite what people think of me and I kind of felt a little bit of that 
Yeah, thematically, I felt like it was even simpler than that. Us. Thematically, in terms of one was yes, I love the way they lean into the whole fake news. Anybody can make you believe anything that's these cool. days. That's cool. I'm actually. I, I wanted more of that. I think there was that. There was this one brilliant line that he has where that's the thing. People will believe anything these I days. I think that's right? like a yeah. kill monger. People, and, you know, you need to give yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was a beautiful line though, Solid, because yeah. that's also that really sums up this sort of post-Trump world that exactly, we live in, exactly. um, where you can smear anybody. And yeah. it also there's also something very simple and classic comic book about it, right? Which is that here's somebody who's doing something heroic. But there's yeah. your J Jonah and the other people who are like, damn vigilante! Yeah, like this whole, yeah. it's we got to like, take him yeah, down, yeah, right? Yeah, Which is I was reading this thing that right? you know, it's like they've shaped the Daily Bugle, and this is amazing. I it's mean, basically Infowars, right? Info it's yeah, Infowars yeah, yeah. all over so again. So good, but, yeah, and what's but really I would have loved to see twenty percent more of that and twenty percent less, less of, of the, the I miss Tony bit because I, I'm got in agreement. It, right? I'm in agreement. Got it. Like that's maybe this is the transitional film that we need entirely possible. This is the palette cleanser before whatever the next phase is, which is exactly what I needed. So and I think and I think they knew. I needed some cl- closure. I needed closure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really Fair freaking enough. did, man. I really no, did. but also, I mean, if the lead character of your film is dead, I, and since this world is so, like, it's a fabric now, you they're yeah. so interconnected, that you can't not address it. Unless it was like, Guardians of the Galaxy, no, they're in another corner of space and nobody knows who Iron Man is. But even there, they would, because he that's essentially the thing, right? saved the universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's the thing. When the movie starts, right, that in-memoriam montage done by the high school students is hilarious. Yeah. I bought it immediately, yeah. and I'm like, this is the perfect tribute. Yeah. Right? Because they went there, they thought, well, what would a bunch of high schoolers do with yeah. this? Yeah. It was touching, it was yeah. hilarious, it was all of that at once. Yeah. That and one, two more scenes, and I would have been done and ready to move on with yeah, the story. Enough. They mm-hmm. did all the housekeeping up top with the five years, if you disappeared, yeah. you had the same exactly. age, exactly. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. all that housekeeping, there, yeah. and then they could have sort of, I would have just liked to see more of, because also one of the things that happened is you have this beautiful cast of high school students yep. that have gone along with them. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I feel like there wasn't enough justice done to other than the Brad and the Betty characters. <laughs> yeah. You know, there wasn't a lot done with right. like that with entire... Zero, what's his name? Uh, Flash's with, character yeah, yeah. with Flash's character <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. with all of those things right? it would have been nice to see a little more done like I love that moment where Brad is the only one who stopped and goes guys one second yeah. <laughs> can we just <laughs> can we please talk right. about the fact that Peter just seems to vanish you know very I did like I did like that, that nice. he addresses it with Nick Fury uh, or in quotes Nick Fury where he's just like uh, you know uh, listen after the Washington Monument these guys are 100% gonna 100% know, know. Yeah, 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 who yeah, I yeah. am yeah. I love that that was really cool this is what I where I agree with you which is that you know I wish that we got a little more of the of the theme of this whole this belief system that the world is now relying on superheroes yeah. and they don't know objectively whether something's happening or not it happened in a corner in mm-hmm. outside yeah. New York where the whole fate <laughs> of the universe was decided yeah. and they just took it for granted and a mysterious character and I just want to get to him in fact we'll talk about Mysterio let's take a break <laughs> yes. we'll talk about Mysterio and, and Jake Gyllenhaal Hey everybody, welcome to another awesome week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you are not following us on social media, please make sure you do. We're IVM Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Do remember that if you enjoy what you're listening to, take a screenshot, tag us on social media, and we'll repost you on one of the platforms. Also, just, you know, shout out if you want to tell us anything about what's going on. Also, a quick reminder, we are still hiring. We're hiring in a whole bunch of different areas. If you're looking to work at what I believe is the best place on earth to work at, then you should check out our careers page. That's at IVM Podcast. On Cyrus Says, journalist and news editor Maru Kinaya talks to Cyrus about the diminishing opposition in the parliament, her journey from growing up in Kashmir to studying at Harvard, her experience reporting 2611, and her podcast, The Note with Maru Kinayat. That's on the IVM Podcast Network. On paperback, Racheta and Satyajit are joined by film critic Sucharita Tyagi, who discusses the role that film reviews play and the books adapted into films. On Keeping It Queer, Naveen and Farah talk to the queer affirmative therapist from the Sahas Therapy Group, Advaita and Jagruti, about mental health in queer spaces. On the Pragati podcast, Pawan is joined by Takshashila fellow Amaya Nayak to talk about the United Nation and its role in global governance. On States of Anarchy, Hamsani's guest is author Manu Pillai. They discuss communal relations and the intersection of the foreign and domestic in Indian history. On the Filter Coffee podcast, Karthik is joined by strategy consultant Mohit Hira. They talk about the evolving brand-consumer relationship and how the concept of airy tales came into being. On IVM Likes, staffers Abbas Saishri and our newest producer Shlok are discussing the Indian version of The Office. I think you'll enjoy that. On the Habit Coach podcast, Ashton talks to one of the finest pastry chefs of India, Pooja Dhingra, where they discuss various entrepreneurial habits. On Equity Sayya, Shrey Lunkar, Senior VP and Ashish Somaya, CEO at Motilal Oswal AMC, talk to Anupam about the company's investment philosophy, how do you identify stocks and a whole lot more. And with that, let's continue on with your show. And we're back. We're talking about Mysterio. Yes. Here's the thing. I love Mysterio from the comics. Amazing villain. Oh, yeah, he's been amazing. dead like a bunch of... He's been dead devil. He's, he's exceptional. I think they did a really good... 
adaptation of how I his powers so. would work as and that was yeah. brilliant it just Even reminded me of like the video game levels like yes. uh, like Arkham or something hey, I was I thought yeah. Scarecrow was the minute I was like Arkham Scarecrow I was like, 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 like yo I can't wait to download this DLC yeah, 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 it's really amazing it was like this is the Scarecrow level it was cool it was a combination of Scarecrow level and Doctor Strange's first trip like you know that you should one takes him on it was a combination of those two elements to the letters yeah that I love in the Marvel movies like Strange has it and the Quantum Realm has it like in Ant Man I love that shit because I it's love so, it's so, so visually weird. playful right? it's so bizarre and they've done a really good justice to like how how many like interpretations they like can have like a benchmark you know? for the off-kilterness of a mainstream movie for me is always like when you watch a mainstream movie and a sequence comes up and you're like man I need to rewatch this movie on acid yeah. <laughs> that's always a good sign that's always a good sign that in a cookie is, cutter mainstream that's, that's movie when you look at it and go there's yeah, enough yeah. visual inspiration yeah. in here to be like I would love to trip out and watch this because yeah. that, that doesn't happen often right in yeah. cookie yeah. cut and the other thing I loved about Mysterio is and this is where they went nice and subtle Okay. Um, the fact that his character was and you could tell like if you've ever read a comic you know that this is not the good guy of course yeah and even yeah. if you haven't there's all these little subtle nods right like the fact that his costume is a combination of thor iron man yeah. <laughs> and this thing like he's got yeah, his yeah, moves yeah. are all doctor strange like yeah, all yeah, his yeah. holograms the are doctor strange he's so by the book they're so yeah, by the book yeah, that yeah. you know this guy is just this derivative but piece you know, of shit i i, I will um, say this i love mysterio so again like how they adapted his powers specifically yeah. with the drones <laughs> is brilliant like yeah. really really well thought out to but the mid mark of the movie, which is where the fucking intermission happens, yes, yes, the theater, right? Yes, freaking <laughs> wait, yes. like was it right at the line? It happens where he's just like, hey, shakes I'm, his hands and he leaves. Yeah, he walks out the bar. Then, yeah, he walks out of the bar and, and cuts to intermission. Yeah, right? yeah. So, God. so another thing uh, is, uh, we can do an entirely separate episode about how ter- I terrible start intermission a points. Yeah. I will start a separate new podcast bitching about intermission points. Intermission. True story: the Star Trek reboot with Chris Pine, the <laughs> PVR, the yeah. intermission happened during the collapse of Vulcan. Oh God! Mid collapse of Vulcan. The Jungle Book, uh, John Favreau movies, <laughs> Intermission, in the second measure of Hakuna Matata, of uh, freaking uh, of bare necessities. Bare necessities. Oh my God! What? Second Mid-song? measure. Wow. Okay. Worst one. I'll First tell of you. all, this is how you know you're recording musicians when people. <laughs> yeah. The phrase "second measure" has been used <laughs> oh, in normal conversation. My, my, my like, favorite and worst <laughs> intermission simultaneously. Dark Knight Rises, Catwoman and and Batman going through the lair, and then. He walks into this thing and da the the cell doors kind of come down. <laughs> and he turns around, Catwoman, and he's like, he's like, sorry and all that stuff. And he looks around and Bane is there, and then it cuts. Wow! And I was just like, wow. oh my god, that's so painful. But that was a really good one. That was. I, I like it, but I also hate was, it. Yeah. Anywho, coming back. Mysterio, Mysterio. 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 Here's yeah. one thing which sucked. <laughs> The exposition in that scene yeah. was too long and heavy handed and I get that he's a villain and he's the monologue. Oh, the one where he's all like, you, you did this. You yeah. did this. You, Cheers to you. you they this. know who Cheers they are. They know who they are. They know who they are. Yeah. I lo- okay. And but, I love that idea of they're all ex stark employed right. and they went yeah. back again Man, to the first Iron Man movie. Yeah, they got, they got That's that one guy. of my favorite scenes. And they got great. that shot of Obadiah yelling yeah, at him yeah, and they went, yeah, I thought that was beautiful. How did you like How did you like them adding Jake into the into the wings? That was great. That was great. I was just like, there was one blur Somewhere <laughs> there, and you're like, I was Jake one, one out of focus boy. <laughs> yeah. Put him in, put him focus in. Focus Jake Jake but uh, this re- there was a Reddit yeah. kind of thing way back, like oh, yeah. uh, about saying, oh, what if Barf was made by you know Quentin Beck? That would be amazing. Yeah, be and cool. boom, we got it. Oh, wow. so, to me, that's the other thing that sort of then actually no, finish what you were saying. Yeah, and then so, we go to that. So I, I I thought this this exposition was way too long, and I thought if it could have been done. A little, like more, like we're a little smarter. Mm-hmm. Like if they mm-hmm. weaved it into the story somehow. But the other thing is that this guy's got such an awesome arc, and Jake Gyllenhaal is great. I mean, he's yeah, so watchable. Yeah. He's actually, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, we get to him at the end where he delivers all these like really heavy lines. He he, he what c- cements him as like a really good villain is the post credit, like the mid credit yes, scene where yes. he is. Peter Parker, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's like, and that's from beyond the grave, which exactly. is great, which is even, like a red move is, actually. Even yeah. dead, he's like, the hero. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, f-ing yeah. brilliant. Yeah, right? that's brilliant. But the other thing is that I just wish that I want to know like more about why. I mean, yes, he's he's a disgruntled employee as far as yeah. this movie is concerned. <laughs> but if there was something to do with like, why does he make this technology? Why is mm. like illusion such an important part of him I know they don't do it as well in the comics but I really wanted to know more about his motivation for being a villain otherwise he kind of falls prey to the to the to the common Marvel villain right. thing he and I feel did. like this he did beyond a, exactly. he didn't leap off the page as much a, as a Killmonger or a Loki exactly he was right. sort of halfway there right. he was almost like, there that's like my problem 10 minutes more about his origin you're as right. opposed and to he's the a way Iron more Man compelling yeah, yeah he's way yeah. more compelling right like the reason somebody like Killmonger is compelling in Black Panther is you get those 20 minutes with him as a kid yeah mm-hmm. exactly um, and that explanation sort and of the soul, carries uh, whatever, forward you know, and yeah. in the soul tree 
My problem with Mysterio was, and you're right, the problems begin at that exposition point because once that exposition happens, and you know it's coming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like as a comic book fan, you know it's coming. But yeah, then yeah. two things happen. One is, um, you're sort of treading that Ben Kingsley in Iron Man three ground again. <laughs> and now again. remind you of Iron Man three. This movie, completely, by the completely. way, but this is a post uh, event yes. kind of movie. And that's what made me. That's what made me well. a little mad because I'm in the minority that loved Iron Man. I love 3. Iron Man. 3. I, I love, love it. Iron Man I thought 3. that Shane yeah, Black yeah. Gambit. Oh, and this okay. just you know that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so it. this just felt like that, but done with less balls. If that makes any sense. Oh. oh. Plus, I actually prefer this to no, Iron so Man 3 in some ways. So yeah. here and then here's where my problem started. It's right when you get to that exposition part and mm-hmm. everything that goes after that. Mm-hmm. To me, that almost in a way signals the problems with these movies, which is that beyond a point. You can't spend too much time focusing on the logic of how these gigantic events and mm. disasters happen. When you try to explain it with, I have this network of super like futuristic drones yeah, yeah, and yeah, light uh-huh. show and all of that. Beyond yeah. a point, even when you put all those explanations in, I'm like, yeah, but that still really doesn't explain the giant like water monster. Exactly. In yeah. where, like almost felt like this is maybe one thing where you should run less exposition. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because you're showing me nuts and bolts that are not believable. No, but you know where I, see, I, you know what I'm I saying? prefer like, that explanation. Yeah. I see a through line. I see a like I must prefer sort of Ben Kingsley's way sort of like oh f- I'm just this drunk f- up and right. that's it yeah, yeah that's it see, more, so, more, so, it more so than Ben I mean I see it now that you mentioned Iron Man 3 I totally see it but uh, I had in my head the whole time I saw a parallel between what he wanted to do and what uh, Zemo wanted to do in that they're yeah. both victims of in in some capacity, second hand victims. Villains are most of yeah, yeah even creations uh, of but, yeah. But so like I I saw like you know like how Zemo people don't really remember him too I much. Love but, Zemo. but I love Zemo. <laughs> people don't I talk about Zemo. Zemo. People don't talk about Zemo like you talk about Loki because Loki's in a lot this cooler. Podcast, we talk about, <laughs> we talk about, Zemo. Talk about <laughs> Zemo. Yeah, and we pray for a Thunderbolts movie that features Zemo at and some point in the future. We pray for him to be in the Captain America and uh, Winter Soldier. He's still Soldier alive. The living are not done with him yet. Yeah, still alive. And there's more than enough living. Sorry. But anyway, my point is what Zemo did. Led up to the events of Endgame, right? Like he, he never, he didn't lose. Absolutely, right. Yeah, what yeah. He did, and so I saw that parallel here. Fact, and, I read and in a really vein, interesting story that what? said that technically Zemo's the most successful, successful villain yeah, in yeah. the MCU Completely. because he yes, succeeded. He yeah, absolutely, them. boom. Yeah. Absolutely, and so in that vein, because this was Phase Four, like I was thinking the whole time through, like this is a palate cleanser for me emotionally. So great, I know that it's gonna. Spidey's the perfect guy to meet after the funeral because I need a pick me up. Spidey's mm-hmm. my guy. Mm-hmm. Great, but it is also the end of Phase 4. Like, Endgame, yeah. as big as it was, what's the button you're going to put that's going to be a bigger button than the Endgame button? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, I like the fact that what Beck did does what Zemo did in Civil War, which is, like, just leave it wide open. It doesn't have to be that, oh, you've met your immediate match who's, like, the scariest bad guy that you've yeah, ever yeah, met. Absolutely. But it's just a matter of, like, I'm just going to... He's just exploded it Spider-Man's world a little bit. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. So cool. And again, so, like so again, Reddit ruined it for me by yeah. suggesting the most simple fix to it all. All they really need to do is get Talos so, as Peter Parker, <laughs> so while Spider-Man flies around somewhere right, in the background, right, and people go, "Well, so shit, they're obviously not the same guy." Yeah. End there's, of, there's end two of ways conflict. to fix it, right? Like true, one true. is end a mechanical way, which yeah. is like you get a scroll. <laughs> But what I want is what we all want, which is a Doctor Strange Spider Man movie. Oh, of mm. course. To kind of conclude it. Yeah. Which yeah. We, we could just do the Happy Birthday Spider Man arc where he goes and he can see Keanu Reeves as Uncle Ben. Am I right? No, no, no. Yes. No, Keanu everybody knows Keanu Reeves can't be Uncle Ben because then Uncle Ben would just, the bullet would fly off Uncle Ben, kill the thief, he try would, to kill him, and then Uncle Ben becomes Spider Man. And then Uncle Ben becomes Spider Man. I think Tom story. Hanks. But, Tom Hanks has to make his Marvel. Entry eventually Can Uncle anyone ben. however Charis Recover Star. from Tom Hanks Dying in the first half of a movie He's so sweet <laughs> Exactly He's so I mean. sweet I would just spend the whole movie Here so, Spider-Man yeah. Where the f*** were you You thought I was crying about Tony When Tom Hanks needed if I see, you If I see Tom Hanks die in a Marvel movie Tom Hanks will, man, That is America's in ass the, in, in Tom <laughs> Hanks is America's <laughs> ass Before Chris Evans Tom Hanks was America's ass And conscience and smile and everything Or get like Colin Hanks if you don't want to, <laughs> don't want to be so bad. They can, afford, they can afford it. I love yeah, it. They can afford it. Uh, uh, I anyway. will say this. You know, like in the in the comics, like even the editors in chief, they say, you know, you can bring back every character except Uncle Ben. That's mm-hmm. the rule at Marvel mm-hmm. Studio or Marvel Comics or whatever, sure. right? So I feel like, you know, he's not made an appearance. I don't think they want to I don't do think it. they should. I don't think... Yeah, I mean, no. they... I, you know, you need his suitcase, had, his suitcase had a BFP on it. I was like, you I'm, need I'm to cool with like little, yeah. little nods like that. I'm yo, okay yo, with, like, Uncle I'll take Ben that. is I don't need the more. reason why Spider Man is does but what he does. We've seen that story now. How many? Times? I know, but I feel right. like I need. We need to meet. Okay. <laughs> let me let, let me ask you. Let me ask you. So how do you what, how do you feel about the fact that I was just thinking about this on the way here? I haven't done the count through everybody, but I think for most, if not all, heroes minus Spider Man, we know pretty damn well watertight. How they got their powers, or how their powers work. Yeah. Yes. People have studied Doctor Strange studies. Some Iron after Man the fact, smart. like Black, Black right. Panther. And of course, right. after the fact, but we still know. Spidey, though, 
Zip. Zip. Radioactive spider. Do we like Again. that? Okay. I know. See, is, did he say radioactive spider? No, they those words it. haven't been spoken. Those have words they? haven't been spoken. But right. I'm just going to assume it was radioactive spider. Okay. Because so do you my, like the fact that we don't know? I'm okay with yes, it. Yes, because we, we know most popular spider. spider. One yeah, of yeah all it's most time. popular. I feel like there's a the decision like everybody knows it's radioactive spider. Everybody knows that Ben dies. Cool. Let's move past. I don't feel like they have another explanation that they haven't gotten, gotten to. to. Yeah. Unless Which is there's an, somewhere then it's an amazing Spider Man problem. 3. I hate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, so you don't even want it. Unless they decide somewhere in the third movie that they need to retcon it and I'll tell you how they might do it. It's like if you see at the end of this film, I'm so glad I saw it. It's just like that little banner says, "We're so excited to show you what's next." Yeah. Because the Avengers Tower has been sold in the first. Uh, Spider-Man movie, right? Wait, yeah. uh, you've lost me. Where? So, where are you talking about? At the end of the film, of right. this film, yeah. uh, where he goes to pick up Mary Jane, they're in front of what is now the new refurbished Avengers Tower. Yeah. And it's okay. under construction, okay. which right. is what happens with John Favreau. I mean, like, mm-hmm. Happy's taking all the stuff out of it. Yeah. So, uh, there's a theory which says, well, we're so excited to show you what's next. And it says one, two, three, and there's a question mark, which one is they could say that, oh, it's the next phase, or four, which right. is it could be the Baxter building. Right. So, if, and some people are saying it's either Baxter building or the Oscorp building. Mm. If it is the Oscorp building, mm-hmm. then I'm pretty sure they could tie you know the the origin the origin back into so, okay. it. but do you want Who? that now here's the thing I don't want to see Budapest I didn't want to see the castle <laughs> yeah. run yeah. Yeah. I don't mind seeing Uncle Ben Really? I don't know. I'm completely. Okay. No, see, I would rather see Budapest than Uncle Ben. Yeah, I would rather see Budapest. I would rather see Budapest than Uncle Ben. I was born uh, by the castle. Here's, run. here's yeah, yeah, I know, I know, and I'm with you on that. But here's the thing: I really like the fact that since he's crying so much about Tony, he now has John Favreau. Right, and the fact that John Favreau is entering <gasps> Aunt May's dynamic with him—that's mm-hmm. a cool trio there to work with. Because one thing you have to think about is the fact that Cap has Tony. Tony has Cap. They, they go hand in hand. Cap also has Bucky, right? Bucky is the Cap thing. Cap has that, everybody, dude. Cap yeah. has everybody, but Cap Bucky's has the Nat, guy that Cap has Falcon. Cap, uh, <laughs> Bucky's the guy that Cap has been crying about for like three movies long, and he's mm-hmm. the one that he's the whole plot of the second movie and a big plot of the third movie. Yeah. Spidey doesn't have that. Spidey had Tony to be his like bouncing MJ ball. Ned. It's supposed no, no, no. to be MJ and Aunt May, right. technically. Yeah. They're supposed getting to be. They're getting there. And they're getting there, yeah. which is great. I'm really excited. But I love the fact that Favreau is now the X Factor to be like, I'm part of the old guard and the new guard because sure. I have this well yeah. of knowledge to pull from so I don't need an Uncle Ben because I love the fact that they're forward facing yeah, and they're like see, hey we're building a new but world with you my worry would be if they went like say Civil War style like comic book style and then like they did a cheap thing like kill oh, Hogan spell. in like oh, the yeah, yeah, exactly. next movie as a sort but of which is so weird again, because Happy in the like, comics gets with Pepper, Pepper. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, Jarvis the uh, the <laughs> actual living Jarvis is uh, Mary's uh, yeah. Aunt May but like uh, I, I feel like this relationship is cool yeah maybe you don't need to see it but you know like those acid trip moments that you're yeah. talking about we could. Why couldn't we have not seen the defining characteristic of Spider-Man in a in maybe that's because Mysterio is creating the solution and he doesn't know right. about yeah. Uncle Ben. But if like Strange uh, or something true. does something, if like it were that, it were if it were actual Scarecrow toxin, yeah. we would definitely have seen that. Seen, right? I'm just saying we Fair need enough. that DC Marvel crossover to happen. <laughs> that would be, we need to see Spider-Man tripping on some Scarecrow in, in, toxin. Mysterio is like. It's like Booster Gold in this, yeah. Where yeah. he's this this guy who's trying to create <laughs> yeah, his yeah, yeah. like you know image. image. But uh, I, I I really like the mysterious thing. I hope he's not dead because this you know the end of the film that amazing and we'll talk about that hallway fight scene whatever with the Peter Tingle. Yeah, yeah. but um, <laughs> that, that was he, beautiful. That so, was so well done. Good. That so was good. that was the bit where I watched it and I was like, where was this for the last forty five minutes? Well, like, it's a it's a, it's a hallmark moment. <laughs> no, but, but well, I thought right, the movie is like, quite inventive, I, 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 especially when it comes to mysterious and its powers and stuff like that also how did you feel about Spider-Man not being in New York I thought that was really refreshing in some ways no no that was great it was yeah. cool yeah. That was, yeah. but I also um, that said I really enjoyed that last Manhattan flyby and I was yeah, like, oh was man, cool. this yeah. is the first time because we've seen him in Manhattan. Time he gets it's time he gets yeah, to New York. Yeah, he's owned it. He was, he's owning it. He was Blow Brooklyn in the last film. Right. Well, no, Queens. Right? Queens. Yeah. Yeah. Queens in the last film. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's not Long Island. Queens and then Europe. Yeah. Both places <laughs> that are not known for tall buildings. <laughs> so like, it, it, Space, also not known for tall buildings. Upstate New York. That's it. Yeah, no, we need to get him in Manhattan. We need a New York... I I I, I love just how opposing our, our views are on this because the entire time with the with the with the final forty five minutes uh-huh. like I loved it but in my head I wasn't going where has this been with the with the with the tunnel sequences and all that I was thinking wow they're really gonna milk this in the video game aren't they yeah. oh for sure because I loved I oh, loved God, all the yeah. to- I loved the Tony jizzing I was like yeah, oh, well, yeah let's yeah. let's just keep jizzing over yeah, Tony yeah. and then the cool. Scarecrow stuff happens I was like Oh this is really cool There is but, a Scarecrow Type level uh, Which uh, basically <laughs> Scorpion uh, You know He injects him With something In Spider-Man The, the PS4 game oh, Sorry yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. No, Played it Played it Done You can't You can't not have A Scarecrow type level If it's a superhero game Yeah You need <laughs> to have one at least like. um, How do you feel About the fact That there was no mention Of uh, 
Vulture slash Scorpion. Kind of okay with it because it makes sense yeah. he's in prison. Yeah. But I yeah. love Michael Keaton. I yeah. want him to come back. Yeah. And they yeah, set him up exactly. nicely at the end of the, the previous And one. that's the other thing that like that I just felt like as a villain, the le- overall level of menace Man. that you got mm. from Michael Keaton mm-hmm. was way higher than what but you that, got you know, that, from... You know, you know what's so amazing about these these villains? Like at least Because I, again, as yeah. somebody who's essentially been hurt by Stark and Stark Tech, essentially been trying to <laughs> revitalize his career using old Stark Tech, yeah. old Chitauri Trek. It's I thought... Awesome. Again, Mike, the Michael Keaton arc was way stronger. True, I agree. Yeah, he has a he has and a good story. Like, and easier exposition, like just know, and it sits well within this, you know, this John Hughes kind of uh, and again, style, right? You know, that this idea homecoming. of if it's a sixteen-year-old, the idea that your it's just such a beautifully simple idea, right? That your crush's dad is your yeah. would Which be your worst enemy. Yeah. It's just such it's a, a beautiful it, teen yeah. metaphor, also. It's right? a line. It's a line it's, in this movie I think yeah it's a line he says to Fury at uh, when he first meets him he's like yo can I just do like neighborhood problems yeah, yeah. and yeah. the neighborhood problems in Homecoming I think resonate better because it's it, yeah. there's more you can get at you can dig into those problems more but you're totally right I think just even on paper this movie because of the consequences of Endgame and the fact mm-hmm. that he's got this existential crisis and the whole world is looking yeah. to him yeah they're juggling so many balls that are yeah, just yeah, yeah. all over the place but and you like, know I still think they did a really they good did job a, they did a, I do this, think so this but movie it feels is, like it was Put together in the edit a little bit and some reshoots kind of it made it work. It feels like they ticked every box, box. but just about. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. there's no box left unticked, Absolutely. but it's not a tick with a flourish. It's yeah, just, yeah. it's a tick. I'm with yeah. it. It's a tick. And I'm that's what this was. And I'm I have no you. problem. If it's ever yeah. on TV and it's not, that's fine. I'll watch it. But no, no, will yeah, I dude, ever like wax let, eloquent let, about this movie? Let us not, uh, let us, let's not. not forget also that you know, with these kinds of films, they're so deep into this universe yeah. Yeah. that we have a completely different set of evolved problems. Also, yeah. let's, yeah. also right? let's not forget that specific to Homecoming and Far From Home, it's very obvious that Sony's making children's films, unlike yeah. the other Marvel movies. Yeah. And then if I look at it that way, though, as children's films go, they're quite interesting and textual. Oh, like, yeah, it's like a teen Like comedy. as a 13, 14 year old, if yeah, they're yeah. watching this and they're watching Mysterio go, people will believe anything. I think that's a very new train of thought to give a 13 and no, 14 year old awesome. to go into I, the world. Actually, I really like Which that is, there's that theme in this film because yeah. I've been I, I always look for some of the themes in these like things like sometimes it doesn't have to do much yeah. uh, Endgame is like a closure kind of thing mm-hmm. Infinity War is about sacrifice so I like that they still had something core at it even though, even though I had to Agreed. kind of dig at it to get it two things one is J. Jonah Jameson being mm-hmm. played by J.K. Simmons mm-hmm. f***ing lost my shit yeah, completely in the theatre I, I was literally like oh my f- God. I was hyperventilating. <laughs> I was, I was, I was yeah, 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 yeah. full on hyperventilating. That feels like something that happened after a test screening where yeah. people were like, you know, we need one more punch. You know, I yeah. read We need one more punch. That so, feel is not coming. Uh, let me, let me like, tell you this. I was reading an interview this morning about John Watts. He's like, you know, we, uh, I really knew that I wanted to have him, but we had to wait till the last moment. So we called J.K. Simmons into the Disney conference room, put a green screen behind him, and shot him. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And he was just like, okay, cool. Am Did I he improv? Because that'd be great. No, so that's what he's like. We couldn't use the first take because the moment he did it, I fing started laughing and like we couldn't use that take so we had to do it again but wow. I was just like yo brilliant yeah here's one awesome thing though I, I will say and you know we have kind of worked at the fact that Sony is involved in these films mm-hmm. like you know but it is Sony's character as yeah, far as yeah, this goes absolutely. but here's a cool thing J.K. Simmons I mean yeah. there's a there's a huge connection to be made between now, all these films now the what ifs basically yeah, open up, and, yeah. and the Spider-Verse is really a thing yeah, yeah. Man, which is another reason this really film this is another to. reason that this film was a little underwhelming it also yeah. had to essentially not didn't come after Homecoming it yeah. came it after Spider-Verse, Spider-Verse yeah, right yeah, in yeah, the yeah. That, so, and that is the that best is the Spider-Man best film. Spider-Man film far and yeah, away. It's, like, it's far and away. Yeah, I still put it on randomly. Man, on like, it's and I'm like, just I'll pause it somewhere, and every frame is like a wallpaper. Every, yeah, and that's every, what they said. Like they were like, oh, we want to be able to so that you can pause yeah, it, and everything it's just will look good. Glorious. It's, it is. It's amazing. And here's perfect. the other thing: is like since that universe is available, I man, it would behoove them mm-hmm. to really kind of. Maybe think about getting Toby Maguire or one of these guys. What if they got Toby Maguire and they kind of really leaned into like Andrew Garfield being this emo kid or Toby Maguire being this like whatever the OG Spidey and like made a fucking movie with what the Spider Verse character. What if they that made Spider Verse two and they got animated Tom Holland? I think they should. No, two. I they should not that would animate be a ton it. Of fun. They should not bring they should in bring it, in live action. They can Roger Rabbit. Yeah. Oh, could do. Could do. 
That would be incredible. That would also. <laughs> and then, oh, is, so, like, is Natasha like Jessica Rabbit? I yeah, I don't know. Because you, you can't have a Roger Rabbit without a Jessica. Well, he's yeah, not Roger Rabbit, Rabbit though. <laughs> but it would be amazing it's to see. It's true. It's true. Cool. We have yeah, one, a few more things to talk about. Yes. Let's talk about uh, Nick Fury and Maria Hill. That was just what I was going to say. Yes. Nice. Please let's. It's, so yes, is it just me or did was there something really off about him anyway yeah. in the film? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what it was. I don't know if Samuel Jackson was playing it a specific way. I think. He was Especially on the basis Of the reveal at the end Yeah hmm. I think it was Because like That was me, brilliant though that was, It was Which is And it happened Right when I was watching it And again This is if you're Eagle Eyed and you're a comic fan When he mentions Captain Marvel And he's like yeah, don't, don't invoke, invoke her name. name Yeah I was like That is not yeah, a Nick so Fury exactly. to say so at all. I'm so glad you said that And I was a bit like And yes. when it first happened Completely. I was like Is this just bad dialogue writing yeah. Is this because You know He feels such a bond to her Because in the 90s, 90s Like maybe, the first hero yeah. etc But it makes sense And then in the end I was like of course, this is brilliant, and that actually was one of the, I think, one of the finest touches in the movie. So where good. you take a line that made us all sort of wonder when it was but also Samuel out. Jackson yeah. playing and it like so yeah, off, yeah, just off and confused. I think and I think what worked about the confused confusiness of it was that I felt when I was watching it in the thick of it, well before that line even happened, I was like, I feel like I'm looking at a Captain Marvel. Nick Fury like <laughs> yeah. like a plucky yeah. a plucky or lighter yeah. Nick Fury yeah. Yeah. I'm not which, looking at which I like I mean like he has a line when he first meets Spidey being like yo I've been gone for five years I used to know everything now I know nothing yeah, yeah, yeah. therefore I am bumbling through this that seems which odd was, though it was, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, no, no, Fury always has absolutely. a plan B, C, D, absolutely. E, F exactly like, so I was like, I was like cool like he's, he's, he's like he's sort of yeah. tongue in cheek with Spidey just to get yeah. in good with him but then that joke was going on for so long I was like yo so sweet hashtag not my Fury what the fuck is this and he's always dicking with his yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah, not yeah, used yeah, to it. Uh, he's not comfortable with other it. Other thing I noticed also in the film, I don't know if this is true or not, uh, but like in other films, but like she keeps calling him Nick in the entire film, mm. and she may have done that before. But you know the whole thing mm. about him uh, wanting to be called yeah, Fury. Yeah. I was reading this thing on Reddit where <laughs> this is fucking amazing. If this is true, uh, apparently uh, people are like. We don't know how long Fury has been Fury mm. because in one movie previously, I don't know Ultra or something after that, he's having diagonally cut toast, <laughs> oh. which is uh, <laughs> something that he says he doesn't do. Yeah. In Captain wow. She calls him. She calls him insane. Nick at the end of uh, Infinity War, also though yeah. in the post credit yeah. scene when she's Maybe, disappearing. She says yeah, Nick. She doesn't yeah. say Fury. So. Maybe Who's what? Just, I don't Who's know. But say? it's actually really say? cool because that leads perfectly cool. to Secret Invasion. I thought that invasion. was a beautiful touch. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But it's I don't perfect. think they're going to do Secret Invasion. I, they might I mean, not do Talos it. is a good guy now. You know so what yeah. they could do? It's like yeah. not have like this... Uh, in their own words It's so meta now I Avengers level it. threat yeah. Yeah. They don't need to have that But they could see The secret invasion story In between the films I would love films, it If their know? next big event Was secret invasion Man. Because I feel like There would be no, I want uh, uh, Avengers vs X-Men No <laughs> That's at least 10 years away Yeah, That's at least 10 years away yeah. I feel like we have An Illuminati movie Before that <laughs> yeah, That would sure. be nice That makes right? sense It makes sense But they have to include Namor But that's another thing Somebody Mariner. pointed out Everybody noticed How um, by the time We got to um, Infinity War And Endgame Avengers headquarters was mysteriously on a waterfront it wasn't in the first two movies oh, yeah they were like hmm, it's funny how it's at a waterfront now but, uh, you never saw the waterfront angle I think you never saw the waterfront yeah. angle earlier and they dug like, oh, a trench so deep well spotted <laughs> it's stock tech okay yeah, yeah, everything he's competing with a boring company that's also my favorite no, he's competing that's my with favorite the BCCI thing who can change the weather whenever the MCU want. right now every time nothing you can't explain stock tech yeah. it's stock tech uh, it's stock tech and it's Chitauri tech that's man it. it's insane like, how much money they may have this guy has a ship which can build a suit and then the ship blows up and that thing is Cool. Gone. That's cool. <laughs> it's like yeah, holy shit. One of several. It's yeah, fine. My God. It was one it's of several. But it's actually it's it's parallel with the comics, man. Yeah, it's like the yeah, hall of suits. Yeah, and yeah, 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 it's, fine. it's, it's a, cool. He's no, been, the few things you don't want to question. He's, he's Bruce Wayne. He <laughs> does. He, he, he has things. He's fine. Yeah. He has things. He has things. Yeah. At, money. Least, at least what I like about him is that he makes his own things. Well, yeah, this is true. Bruce Wayne I, is a safe investor. <laughs> he yes, doesn't. Bruce, he's a savvy businessman. Very savvy. Amazing. Ambani would be very proud of him. No, but see, this is the thing, right? This is what you know about Tony Stark. He probably had an investment in the company that made that plane, but also in the company that made the bomb that blew up the plane. So it's all good. Tony wins one way or another. Whatever side, right? Right, yeah. No, so uh, how long do you think Nick Fury has? Uh, do they make any mention of how long Talos has been? No, uh, they did not. They Though like, Nick Fury in that shot looked like he was in space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was in space. That's why I up. thought he was on yeah, sword, yeah. which was is on the that, that sword. equivalent yeah, yeah, yeah. of shield. Yeah. Sword station. Sword. He was, on, yeah. was he on sword station? I mean, that's I'm the, pretty sure it's sword. I mean, that's the speculation. That's station. where they're leading yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where Captain yeah. Marvel kind of operates out of as well. well I, oh I'm, man, I'm gonna, then they totally should do secret invasion. Yeah, exactly. Ooh. That that's that's why everybody's excited about it. But I feel like Dum Dum Dugan blow up sword station in the secret invasion comics. In MCU, he was a he was war veteran. He's right. So he's not there. Maybe. 
junior or the well, third the only junior dum-dum the fourth. who's from there is uh, his high school teacher at Midtown is the grandson right. yeah, yeah, grandson yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, yes. <laughs> yes. of one of the uh, old guard yeah. okay so uh, this movie I enjoyed it I think uh, it's like every Marvel movie it takes me some time to be able to place it within the canon like where do I see this stand I instinctively see it as lower down the list though this one it's my first yeah. instinct is to tell me that out of the now it's what, filler not killer yeah it's filler not killer it's definitely more um yeah, Iron I think it's Man a great transitional in. movie, man. Like yeah, it, it does absolutely. the it does the job for me. Like yeah, does cool the job. Spidey shit, MJ, it's cool. I like. But it. if it showed up again on TV, I'd probably be like, I'm gonna watch Spider Verse again. That's oh, totally. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm but I think watch that's Spider Verse again. But I feel like yeah. that's probably gonna be your answer for like the next <laughs> this the next true. several Spider until Spider Verse two comes out. Yeah, until yeah, Spider Verse yeah. two comes out, man. Yeah, no, I'm with you. It's 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 not it's not in the the top tier, but it's in the top it's in the top half. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're more generous than I am. Yeah. 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 It's That's, in the top 12. Yeah. Man, it's so like, difficult. It's difficult it's not, to judge like, these. It's, it's not the it's dark low world. Down, it's, it's low not down the, the dark 12. world. It's not the oh, dark God, world. No, no. no it's no, definitely yeah. not the dark world. Yeah. Um, um, but I'm fine with dark world. I just want to say it. <laughs> so you, like this, you like dark world better you know, than this movie? Which is the worst Marvel movie? Iron Man 2. Agreed. Fight me. Yeah. Agreed. No, no, no. Who's going to fight you? Iron Man Dark rubbish. It's what? Close second. Dark World, you know, Dark World is funny also in some parts and all. It's cool. I, I like it. But yeah. again, my biggest problem with Dark World is I maybe remember two scenes from the entire yeah. film. Okay. If yeah. that, yeah. which but, is uh, the problem. But Endgame has single handedly made Dark World better. Yeah. Way more important. Yeah. Yeah. Immediately. <laughs> more Immediately. They're like, how do we make this part of our back catalogue valuable? I'm telling you, yeah. Topher like, Grace needs to do a fan edit where he cuts in scenes from Endgame and puts it into a Dark World. I'm <laughs> saying the next movie needs to be Spider Man and Venom. Yeah. I think that would be amazing. Okay, so I would love to see Tom Hardy's Venom how, playing Let's talk off. about how trash uh, Venom was as a film. Hey. Uh, okay. One second. <laughs> I, like I enjoyed Venom. I like, hey, I'm with I, you. Because you I know like what? Venom. The opening Venom it's reviews were just like, this is the film. worst, etc. I went and watched it. I was like, you know what? I'm entertained. And again, Man, Tom does, Hardy was great. Does that okay. does that affect you as much as it does me? Like, if I, if I know people hated it, obviously... I feel like my yeah. brain just neutralizes to like, okay, give yeah. it the benefit of the doubt and yeah. then I end up liking it. Okay. Yeah, same. Or so I may... go in there expecting such a massive level of cringe that I'm like, mean... hey, it's okay. not yeah. Yeah. Allow right. me this right. then. You know, it's right. Allow it's me a... this. All right. Venom, garbage movie. <laughs> Dark Phoenix, not bad. Hey. <laughs> wow. No. Wow. Dark wow. Phoenix way, has a lot more merit to abandon to all credibility. No. Way to abandon Dark all Phoenix credibility. Dark Phoenix has a lot more merit than Apocalypse and the previous f***ing... One second. Days of Future Past... Days of Future Past is alright. No, on... King, it's stupid. Okay, there's some <laughs> dumb ass shit in that movie. Okay, it really is. Okay, yeah. I mean, like we've, Stark we've, Tech. We've, we've done this like at length. Stark Tech. Okay, at, fair enough. Several lengths. Length. Dark enough. Phoenix has merits. I will. I'll say. You know when that movie comes up on TV? When you watch it again, no, no, you're gonna be like, no, no, oh, this is a cool no, fight scene. The problem with cool. Dark Phoenix is oh if you're God. taking on again, it's like it's you about, cannot know, make man, an average know, Infinity Gauntlet movie. Yeah, in that same way, you don't get. They didn't earn it. But my point is, you can't do it. Like that is, it's a crime when you take the Infinity Saga and make a shit. Movie. They didn't own Days of Future Past They didn't own Dark Phoenix Dude, why You, you want to play with time You gotta build it I know Also Apocalypse My, <laughs> problem, Apocalypse, my problem was Who hires Oscar Isaac And okay. then buries yes. him Under that layers is one of the and worst layers of prosthetic oh, It's one of the worst horrible, films right? horrible. Now, But Dark Phoenix Not as bad as Apocalypse That's all I'm saying And Again, this is the that's worst That's not a benchmark though That's yeah. like saying cancer no, no. Not as bad as AIDS It's not no, but a benchmark my, But my point is That when this movie came out And everyone was like Oh this is absolutely The worst film Of the X-Men saga Of all time No it's not There are plenty of others To choose from It's called The Last Stand It's called uh, it's Origins called the last Wolverine. Wolverine Or Origins yeah. Wolverine okay, yes. anyway, Point Origins is Wolverine. Uh, Point is um, I thought Venom was bad I like Tom Hardy So I will give him The benefit of the doubt However Spider-Man and Venom I don't know if I want to Take our boy Tom Holland And put him in the Sony universe Do we need that? But he is in the Sony yeah. universe That's I mean, not going away yeah. Yeah. He is in the Sony universe That's I mean if away. they get Woody Harrelson Also look as Carnage oh, wow. Sure He's there Yeah, 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 yeah. he's Carnage I, I love him But I also love but Tom Hardy But I was just saying right You're saying you love Tom Hardy And he was in a terrible film So see you take him out of that like, terrible yeah, film see, that was a good film That was my no, I Sony, think good actor saying, to play Sony doesn't make that film And by the way This is Amy Pascal's last uh, film with, yeah. I mean, She may be produ- She's not the producer As I think she's, le- home is the she's left Sony yeah, okay. So so we don't know really What that yeah. means for the future But uh, having said that If they bring Venom Into the Marvel Cinematic Universe As opposed to The reverse Maybe there's a there's hope for that. That yes. would be cool. I'm all for that. 
Yes. No, I, don't, I don't want anybody to go into if Sony. Anybody, yeah, that's if, what Sony I meant. <laughs> if anybody can make the tri- perfect trifecta of Marvel, Fox, and Sony working together to give us a movie where Deadpool, Venom, and Spider Man hmm. go off on an adventure, I would pay so much money to watch Tom would, Holland's yeah. earnestness contrasted. That has been. With, that's been my overall opinion on Deadpool and Venom. Yeah. Was that I like the movies. Yeah. I don't. I mean, I like Venom a lot more than you did, but I think it's not a perfect film by far. Oh, no, However, no. I thought it's that the chat, film. Ryan Reynolds, Tom Hardy. Doing the job really well. Yep. However, the stories that the world that they're in aren't that interesting. No, they're not at all. Put them in the MCU where stakes matter, where people it, exactly. have time yeah, to like, I'm build. Yeah, I'm for that. I so don't just want them, bring those guys no, I don't want Tom Holland going into the Venom film. I'm saying the other that way sucks, around. I'm yeah. saying the other way around. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying sure. Spider-Man 3. Yes. All right, whatever. Further from home or close to home or whatever or, you want to call the third yeah, film. Homestay. <laughs> homestay. Airbnb. Whatever you want to call the third Spider-Man film. Yeah. If Venom walked into that universe that and now good. here's yeah, Spider-Man absolutely. not understanding how to deal with essentially a dark version of himself. Yeah. I think that would be interesting. But is that the natural That's conclusion to this trilogy? I feel like the natural conclusion is something that kind of... I mean, the peak of Gate Power, Gate Responsibility, but with Sinister Six, because they're kind of setting it up. Oh, yeah, yeah of course. Because they've got Scorpion and uh, Vulture there. So and who, do you, who do you think should play Norman Osborn? Uh, obviously... Friggin Brian Cranston Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, The internet <laughs> uncle I, yeah. Yeah. We got that yeah. out um, I, I think that The fact that Beck did talk about The multiverses And then he They kind of Downplayed that mm-hmm. Though we do know They exist Because of Strange, oh, strange yeah. I think yeah, let's talk about that That, that yeah. is something That they should And probably will Expand upon Because you're right It would be, be great To see Spidey and Doc Team up Because like I said Spidey doesn't have His, his buddy buddy Who wears a cape He's got Favreau, he's got Aunt May, but they can mm-hmm. only go so far. MJ is not, she's yeah. going to be the damsel more than she is going to be the, like, the pepper who took like eight movies to finally put a suit on. Yeah. You know, so like it. And he doesn't needs, even know what movie she's in. Yes. <laughs> she, he needs, he needs a buddy. He needs an equal that can help him get there. And Strange can be the one that sort of validates what Beck has started. True. Yeah. And the, I that's how be, you can bring a venom. Yeah, you can be like, yo, needs to be the he, he, he the, the harsher mentor or whatever, like yeah. like father, the not stoner, father figure, the but yeah, stoner like, I don't give a shit about stern, the fact yeah. that you're a kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. basically your the same dynamic, the same dynamic that he had with him in Endgame and Infinity War. Yeah, pretty War, much. Pretty much. Just continue that. Just like yeah. shut up your mouth. I have work to do. Adults are talking. Yeah, basically that was his attitude. But how do you feel? You know, some of my favorite comics, and just maybe we can conclude after this. But like some of my favorite Spider-Man comics are when you know he leaves Midtown and goes through. You and finishes that, and then he's like a working professional adult, yeah. like mm-hmm. he's a freelancer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the thing that I really like about the fact that it's the Daily Bugle.net, yes. or like in the Spider Man game, J. J. Jensen has a podcast, show, podcast yeah, yeah. has a podcast, which, which is quite cool. Also, the dialogue in there is great. Amazing, the game, so like good. when you're swinging and you're Fantas- listening to J. Jonah, that, that's great. If we may rank all these Spider Man movies, the Spider Man story in the game is yes. one of the best. Yes, it ever, is one of the best. Right? I agree. Uh, I agree but, but having said that, I, I like that. So, his relevance as of being Spider-Man or Peter Parker, the photographer, is mm-hmm. meaningless now because people can just like WhatsApp. Everyone's right. a photographer nowadays. Yes, yes. It's everyone true. has yeah, a DSLR. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to see how they would fit that into this new universe, and maybe that's why they got J.K. Simmons because they know he's not going to take a more prominent role because the news media in that mm-hmm. sense is not yeah. as essential. But what do you think that should co- be the natural conclusion to this? Trilogy Is it Sinister Six Or is it like Do you think we should now Add like a Venom arc But that will change things Or I think logically Where the characters go is um, I guess you're looking at either And I'm, I'm thinking about Peter Parker Less than Spider-Man right? Right. You've, yeah, had, exactly. you've had two yeah, yeah. films you have to, you have you've, had, you've had two films Where he's essentially Been in high school So yeah. I'm assuming the third film They're gonna age him not age him He's or gonna get an American of, Pie movie No just like a graduation <laughs> thing Right Like essentially okay, yeah, Like yeah, where yeah. Now then the graduation theme has day. to be Is essentially graduation but day he, which This is, is the last day of school I thought right This was No is this it? got one no, more no, summer no, no, no. This was the interstitial summer He's They go back to school next yeah, year Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so They have one more year of high school So, so the idea is <laughs> Sort of Spider-Man graduation day Would be yeah. interesting Because again It thematically would work In terms of Sea change in life Right In terms of all these characters That you've been with Yeah and I think IC board And then goes off to college Or Whatever so that do you is, see is, that if Tom story. Holland is locked in for these films, I mean, he's obviously going to make his appearances in mm-hmm. other mm-hmm. Avenger style yeah. films or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I would really like to see maybe they can go off do Shang Chi all these other films, yeah. and then come back with another like 
set of films but like way later in life because those are some of my favorite Spider-Man stories this as is, well this like is when he's older yeah, and he's got more responsibility he's like broke sure, and he's yeah. a resp- like that's true responsibility when yeah. he's not under May anymore he lives in Manhattan in a shitty apartment I feel apartment. like that's a thing that could happen like what in the, the Spider-Man film, game like, is essentially yeah, you know yeah, like yeah. that story yeah. where he's like a broke he's getting evicted or whatever it is um, I would like to see that I Pizza feel like time. that might be somewhere they go in the third film because I also feel like they could use other films or other characters to show you where Peter is like sort yeah. of to move him along exactly. in the world yeah, and by the time you like yeah. come to yeah. this thing but again he can that I'll can be, be trying to that. juggle like New York University right. and like else. Yeah, yeah. something else but, and I mean, hey good. student loan debt Boom! Student loan debt. Wait, what, Peter Parker fights student loan debt. Selected. That's true. Not Bernie Sanders. <laughs> but student loan debt. Spider-Man versus student loan debt. There's a terrifying villain for you. I'm, yeah. I'm on. I'm on board for <laughs> you. I'm on board for you seeing his his uh, his life plot points in other people's movies just yeah. by mentioning the fact that hey, I'm in college now. Hey, I'm in yeah. um, whatever. That I'm an intern cool. or whatever. But I think the fact that Beck sold the multiverse thing past Fury so easily. But that's also not Fury, right? Yeah. But the but the fact that that went by so easily Jesus. and the fact that we know that it's a thing like we yeah. know that everything he's talking about is actually based in in truth in the MCU so he must have figured that out but so I feel like Spidey would be a great guy for us to see the multiverse, see the multiverse through Absolutely. as opposed yeah. to Captain Marvel who obviously we will but no, Captain, Captain Marvel strange will probably no, no, see no, the but multiverse, right? Captain Marvel is all, like no, but I think it's the, important for somebody like Spider-Man, Spider-Man to be there just to be the audience, the audience exactly to be because the audience he's the guy who, because Strange is going to be there and be like I know this I right. know this Strange Spider-Man and Marvel will be like yeah this is this is this is this is why we have a Doctor Strange Spider-Man movie right that's so that's why my I would I would want you see you see Spidey's life played out in other people's movies Wait, it is going to be the Baxter building. One, two, three, what? four. Why? One, two, three? Question mark. Yeah, yeah four. So four. four. Yeah, that's could what be phase using. four phase, yeah. or no. Fantastic Four. No. Or maybe Fantastic they don't. Four. They're yeah. gonna abandon phases. We're gonna. I, find I out, would. I'll put money on that. We're gonna Fantastic find out four, a, yeah. on July twentieth. We are Comic Con. All H. Yeah. yeah. And they're the then, only studio there this year. Yeah, I know. Uh, but Game, Game of Thrones. Very oh God! Yeah, courageously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they have Hall H. They are going to Hall H. And they are gonna be there. Yeah. Wow. I've been enjoying the Free Folk subreddit so much. Yeah, it's the best. As they're all having these internal debates about how what is the appropriate way we should greet D and D, and there's the peaceful faction, which is that guy's anger solves nothing. Uh, laugh at them to uh, show them how little yeah, we care yeah, yeah. and the other like, like no we should just straight up just, yeah, yeah we should just straight up behead them <laughs> Let's start put them on a pike <laughs> straight up put them on a pike let's joffrey these oh, okay. let's remind them when God, the villains were good <laughs> alright 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 all right, all right. so okay. uh, Ron thank you so much for being here man thank you so much yeah. for having me um, uh, if you want to win a Geek Fruit t-shirt let me tell you what you can <laughs> okay, do okay please tell me what I can do please tell me what I can do <laughs> so we like emails send us your emails but it should have bullet points and it should have a theory that we have not uh, what do you call it discovered wait, wait, yet are we giving a t-shirt for the best theory for best organization in an email in bullet point form I think because I care far more about the second yes of course the yeah. second I don't care about your theory yeah. I, I want I, that shit I want an OCD friendly <laughs> yeah, organized something. paragraphed I respect formatted yeah, proper that, tabs bullet, bullet consistent points. font yes. do you have any indentation specifications in terms of no, I just, surprise I, me I just <laughs> want I just want only serif fonts no, no sans serif <laughs> alright got okay. it alright alright cool modern man yeah. okay <laughs> uh, alright cool let's uh, let's uh, let's wrap this mother uh Thanks for being here. Let us know your thoughts on Spider-Man. Uh, you can write to us, contact geekfruit at gmail.com. Find us on social media at geekfruithq on Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. No, uh, what is it's the other true. one? It's Instagram. It's Got it. Thing. Instagram. Let's do it. All right, cool. Thank you so much. See you later, you nerds. Are you constantly seeking happiness? Wondering how to make the most of every day? How not to let... Your inhibitions stop you from achieving your goals? It's now time to get your A-game on. It's time to unlock your true potential. Tune in to the empowering series with me, Zarina Poonawala, to feel empowered in all genres of life. From behavioral skills to management skills, from health to relationships, from mental well-being to emotional well-being, and of course, your finances. I've got you covered. With these tips and tricks from me, Zarina, and true life stories from my amazing guests, you're bound to bring your purest to the table. Tune in to the Empowering Series with Zarina Punawala every Thursday on the IVM Podcast app, website, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey guys, I'm Mikhail Almeida. I host uh, a podcast with my co-hosts Akash Mehta and Siddharth Reja on the IVM app. It's called What a Player. What, what a, a Player. player. W A D D A P L A Y A H because illiterates can't find it on their own. No, and yeah. the H at the end is very important. What, what a, a player. player. Yeah. 
<laughs> and it comes out every Thursday on the IVM app. Uh, tune in. We discuss everything sports, uh, all sports, uh, all, all sports. sports. Yeah, <laughs> mainly cricket, other sport in the middle sandwich. <laughs> what happened to your language skills? Thursday. Don't worry, he talks better on the show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so, a great show. It has all things, including cricket and uh, things around sports as well. Yeah, and some personal life. As you can see, we're a very united podcast, and if you want to listen to us, tune in to us every Thursday on the IBM Podcast app or ibmpodcast.com.